Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hopefully everything is working correctly. You can see me, you can hear me, um, but welcome to this live webinar. Uh, yes, I see everything is working. Uh, about personalization with the U Marketing Suite. Uh, how can you optimize your Umbraco website with the U Marketing Suite? Um, I'm gonna share my screen because after all, it's a live demo. Let's see, probably this is working. I'm gonna put myself out of this and here we go. First of all, if you never met me, I'm Jeffrey Schumacher. Uh, as you can hear, probably I'm Dutch. Uh, I'm the owner of Perplex Digital. It's an Embraco Gold partner in the Netherlands uh, and I'm the co-founder of your marketing suite. Um, today I'm gonna give a live demo of personalization. I'm going to switch between the PowerPoint and two websites. So hopefully nobody's epileptic and everything works as uh, it's supposed to. Um, hopefully I can fill 30 minutes with it and explain how the personalization works within these 30 minutes. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the YouTube chat over there or over there in the chat box. And at the end, I will open that up uh, and hopefully I can answer them. Um, a super short intro of your marketing suite because uh, maybe you've already heard of it and also on our YouTube channel, there's a lot of info about your marketing suite. Um, but if you take a look at the technical architecture, uh, at the bottom you have Embraco and on top of Embraco you build your website. And what the your marketing suite does, it adds an extra layer on top of your website where we have data analytics, we collect all data server side uh, and we store it in our own database. And on top of that analytics, we are, uh, we've built an A-B testing module, a personalization model, module that I'm gonna show you today and a profiles module. If you install the U Marketing Suite and the bar of the screen share is in the way, um, if you install the marketing suite into your Embraco 8 website, you get a new section called marketing. And within that section, you have a couple of subsections like analytics, A-B testing and personalization. Uh, so it's a new section that enables you to do marketing within your website. If we take a short look at analytics, um, most important, all data is recorded server side. Uh, so we uh, store on which page you are, which browser you used, which kind of device type. Uh, we store an anonymized IP address, where you came from, which location, uh, bound rate, uh, stuff like that. And we also uh, give you the option for a client side script where you can record scroll depth, uh, engage time on the page, video views, uh, whether you searched, uh, et cetera. And the uh, cool thing about this analytics solution is that it's GDPR compliant. Uh, you own the data. The data is, uh, is stored in your database or the database that you assign it to. Um, and because we're using first party cookies, um, it's ad blocker resistant. You cannot block it easily um, because you own the data and you can do whatever you want with it. It's on both uh, content level as a content app available and in the marketing section. Um, also, we've introduced A-B testing a few weeks or months ago with three types of tests. You can test a single page with an A and a B variant or even a C and D, E. Uh, you can test it on multiple pages at one time and uh, on a document type level. Maybe you've seen it, but you can set it up and you can start testing within a few minutes. Um, especially cool. Now 8.7 is released today, I guess. Uh, Braco 8.7, we can use the split view after the next sprint. So probably around 1st of October, where you can have the A on the left side and the B variant on the right side. Um, and uh, in that way, it's, for, it's possible for every content editor to start A-B testing without writing a single line of code. But that's not what we're here for today. 
because where we are for is personalization. Uh, we've in uh, we've released uh, a few versions of the U marketing suite building up to this release, the personalization release. Um, and we're going to talk a bit about customer journeys and personas. Uh, and we're going to explain uh, the difference between implicit and explicit personalization, where implicit is really based on behavior. We're going to take a look at it uh, in a few minutes. Uh, and explicit personalization, where it's really based on the data that we have or actions people perform. And we're going to do that in seven steps. Nobody said it was easy, so we need seven steps to personalize our website. Uh, but as you probably will see, you can start really simple and make it complex along the way. The most important step is the data. We need data to start personalizing, to measure whether the personalization has any effect and stuff like that. And when you install the marketing suite, it starts collecting data immediately. Um, in step two, we're going to create segments. And we're going to create segments based on explicit data. Uh, for example, we're going to create a desktop for mobile users or uh, for uh, people who are visiting the website after 6 in the afternoon. Explicit data, that's true or false, and we're going to create segments for that. We're going to use those segments in the next step to personalize our website. OK, we can identify everybody on a mobile device or everybody who's visiting their, the website after 6 o'clock. Um, and we're going to use that segment to show different content or change things in the website. In step four, we're going to make it a bit more complex because we're going to add in a customer journey and personas. And if you're a marketer, and you're watching now, probably you're familiar with customer journeys and personas. I'm going to show you uh, uh, which customer journey we've set up in the U marketing suite and which personas we've uh, created for the U marketing suite. So maybe that makes a bit more sense at that moment. And um, but it's important to remember the U marketing suite is a tool. Uh, it allows you to create the customer journey and create personas. But you need a good marketing team to come up with these customer journeys and personas, because that's not something the marketing suite does. That is the, uh, 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 the wisdom of your marketing team. We are the tool where you can store it. And in the next step, every action on the website, you can score against the customer journey and the personas. For example, if somebody comes from, a different, from another website to your website, you can score that. Ah, that was typical a website where these kind of personas come from. Um, or you can score actions within your website. Uh, which pages do people visit? OK, score that on the persona. We're going to live demo it in a few steps. And again, with these customer journeys and personas, we're going to personalize the website as well based on segments. And then the most important step because personalization is not the goal, uh, it's not the end goal. We want to uh, improve our goals or our website. We want to sell more stuff. We want to get more contact forms submitted, stuff like that. So we have to measure that because personalization in itself is not the holy grail. No, it's conversion rate optimization probably. So you have to analyze the success of your personalization. And after that, we're gonna repeat those steps create new segments, try new experiments, uh, maybe uh, change the scores on our website or score new items in our website to create a better overview of what people are doing um, and how this personalization works. But enough PowerPoint for now, we're gonna do a demo and I've prepared two websites. The first one is the live uh, www.umarketingsuite.com website. Um, we're going to use that for a cool demo. And also I have a local solution with Rocco 8.7 running and a version with the split view. I think it's really cool to, to show that as well. Um, so here's the website. 
and you can go to the website. It's just our corporate website with a lot of data on it, pages, a blog, stuff like that. We're gonna look at um, creating segments within this website. I'm gonna go to the Umbraco of this website. Hopefully you cannot enter that. Uh, and you, here you see a normal uh, Umbraco website. Pages, subpages, blog posts, etc. The new thing is of course the marketing section. When you install it, it adds everything in. You have the analytics that like I've shown you before. Here you see per day who visited what pages. You have A-B testing. We're gonna leave that for now because we're gonna look at personalization. Um, I should have done this before, but I'm canceling these segments for a moment. Sorry for that. Because first we're gonna look at segments because segments are the core of the personalization uh, uh, thing we're doing because we need segments. These segments we're gonna use to personalize the website. Here we have a segment builder and we can add new segments. When you click add new segment, you can create a segment. For example, and for these segments, you can select parameters. At this moment, you can create segments based on the persona or on the uh, journey step. It states these are the implicit parameters. So they are a bit more complex and need a bit more of explanation. So I will start with these first. For now, we've added browser. If you click on it, you can see all browsers that, that have currently visited our website. So for example, I can create a segment where I say everyone with Firefox or with Chrome are in a segment. This segment I call Firefox and Chrome users. We give it a description, my favorite description. And we can add multiple parameters. I can extend this with, for example, Internet Explorer as well. Don't know if anybody uses it nowadays, but well, add that. But we can also add in the device set, for example. For now, we have desktop and mobile and unknown. Um, and we can also add in a parameter like time of day. So for example, everybody who is visiting the website after 12 o'clock, we're going to show something different than before. This is the main thing of the personalization. Create a segment based on explicit data like this, because it's true or false if, whether you're using Firefox or Chrome or Internet Explorer, and it's true or false if it's 12, uh, after 12 or before 12. So this is a really explicit set segment, and we're gonna use that to personalize our website. Um, this one, Firefox and Chrome users after 12 o'clock. I've created that segment. It's over here. Don't look at the others at this moment. And we're gonna apply the personalization now. How we do that is we're gonna select apply new personalization and we're gonna give it a title. And of course, I should first explain what I want to achieve. This is the website. And if you look at the bottom, you can see that you can get in touch with us. You can send us an email, contact at youmarketingsuite.com. If you have any questions, please do. Um, but you can also call us, but um, we're not available on this number after six o'clock. So maybe you want to uh, make this line disappear after six o'clock without going to your developer and say, okay, can you programmatically uh, create something that when this is after six o'clock, you remove the number. And then at one moment you say, okay, after eight o'clock, because we've opened up our service times, uh, please can you change that? Now we want to do that ourselves within Umbraco. Um, 
What I want to achieve is that after, in this case, 12 o'clock, because I just set up a segment after 12 o'clock, not after six o'clock, because then the demo would last a long time. Uh, I want to make this line disappear. So I'm gonna apply the personalization. I'm gonna remove the contact number. And I'm gonna do that on multiple pages because on every page, I want to remove this. For now, I'm gonna select these ones. In the next version of your marketing suite, you can also select the entire site. Um, what I now can do is include some CSS or JavaScript. And this CSS and JavaScript is uh, uh, added to the page to make stuff uh, different. In this case, I prepared it. Well, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna do a console.log. Hello, Firefox users after 12 o'clock. Or now even in Chrome. Explorer. And gonna, I'm gonna hide the contact block. It's over here. I prepared it uh, so it's in a div. Just plain JavaScript. And this is, of course, not the end result we're aiming at, but this is something you can do. You can preview it to test whether it works. If you now look, it's been gone. And that's exactly what we want. Now I'm in preview mode. I can see that at the query string, but I want to save and close that. And finally, I'm gonna pick the segment. I kinda can select different segments, but only for Firefox and Chrome users after 12 o'clock, I want to uh, remove or execute the CSS code, which removes the uh, content. So I'm gonna save and start that. And if people now go to the website, www.gmarketingsuite.com, it's removed. Ooh. And if I'm going to Chrome, it's removed as well. The demo gods work. Yes, they, they are happy at this moment. Um, but if I now go back to my segment and change that segment because I have new insights and uh, for whatever kind of reason in the afternoon, we're only not available for Firefox users. I don't know why that would be a, a normal use case. But now if people are visiting it from their Chrome browser, they see the contact details or our telephone number. And with this Firefox user, they do not see it anymore. So that is personalization in a nutshell. We've selected or put people in a segment. And based on this segment, we're going to execute some CSS and JavaScript. Pretty cool, isn't it? I was thinking, but this is pretty cool. Um, the only sad thing is we need to write some CSS and JavaScript, but if you want to do more advanced stuff, so for example, you want to create a contact us and you want to make it bigger or smaller or uh, appear it over here, well, there's nothing to it. You need to uh, ask your front end uh, person to write you some CSS and JavaScript. You're gonna apply it, but you can play with the segment parameters uh, and measure how it's performing. So that's pretty cool. But what is even cooler is that we can base it on the customer journey and the personas. If you go to settings in the marketing suite, you set up goals. I'm not gonna show you that right now, uh, but we also have personas. Within the marketing suite, you can create personas. You can even create multiple groups of personas because sometimes you're in a really complex enterprise environment and you have different subsites within your website, uh, perhaps, or you have different countries within your website with different personas and different needs. Um, for now, we've created just one persona group, but you can add in a new one. But for now, I've set up a few personas because who do we think 
are using the youmarketingsuite.com website are these personas. Maybe a people, uh, a data or a privacy officer who is working at a company is going to look at our website and they will be interested uh, perhaps in the analytic stuff because we're storing it server side, GDPR compliant, uh, yada, yada. Um, they're using now Google and Lives, for example, on their website and they're interested. Oh, well, is uh, marketing script uh, perhaps a solution for us? This person has a different interest than the marketer. Probably this person is more interested in A-B testing or personalization, but the data and privacy offer is not that interested probably in uh, those things. A company owner, in our opinion, a different persona. And of course, uh, developers at an Embraco agency, maybe uh, they saw some tweets of me or discovered the marketing suite uh, somewhere online, they will visit uh, the website as well. They have a different interest. They're looking at different stuff. Um, so this is a different persona with different intentions. And finally, also the marketing at an Umraco agency. You set these up. You can edit them. You can give them a shiny color for in the graphs. You can give them an image if you like. You can add new ones, etc. You can do the same for the journey because everybody who is doing something or buying something uh, are going to a few phases. One of the most well-known customer journeys is the, the, the uh, customer journey that uh, Google describes. It's based on see, think, do, and care. Somebody uh, comes for the first time in contact with the new marketing suite. After that, they're going to consider, hmm, maybe this is something for me. Then they're going to purchase something. And after the purchase, they are in the care phase. We can add multiple steps to the journey. So for example, over here, if we want, we can uh, give them a different uh, order, if you like, because uh, the idea of the customer journey, right, to restore this. Oh, the demo bots are a bit angry. Um, see, thank you, care. Yes. Um, I don't know where I was. No problem, <laughs> because we've created a different customer journey as well. So to show you that you can have multiple customer journeys alongside each other. We've created a more extensive customer journey from an awareness phase to an interest phase. Then you're going to consider the new marketing suite, probably or maybe you're gonna uh, use the trial version. We have free demo licenses. After that, you're gonna purchase it, hopefully. Um, and after the purchase, you come in a retention phase and hopefully to an advocacy uh, phase where you distribute the word that your marketing suite is really cool and that everybody should use it. And what I was going to say was that a customer journey uh, has a specific order. You go from here to here. And that's not the thing with the personas. You are a persona, you can switch personas, but it's not the goal. But the goal in this one is to come to the end. No matter what model you're using or what faults you're having, um, you can create your own personas and your own customer journey. That was, I guess, step Four. Um, in step five, we're going to score behavior on the website to the personas and to the customer journey. For example, if we go to the content tree, I created a blog a, a, a while ago about privacy, trust, and third party cookies. Typically, a topic that the data privacy officer would be interested in. So, people or visitors who are interested in this are probably somebody with a privacy hat on or interested in privacy uh, and stuff like that. In the content tree, we have analytics. So for example, I can see how many, oh, I should score that, how many people saw the blog post. You see, I released it here, it was not that, Nobody looked at it here. We just released it over here. 
Um, we can start an A-B test, but for now we're gonna look at personalization. And here we see the same personas and the same journeys as we just set up. And here we can score people. And we think this is particular, a particular interesting block for a privacy officer or who is, yeah, for a privacy officer. And less interesting for a marketer who doesn't care about GDPR or marketer at an umbrella agency. So I'm gonna score this over here. And people who read this blog are probably uh, people who are uh, first connecting to the marketing suite or have a first interest or are really considering to uh, test out the marketing suite or buy the marketing suite. So we're gonna score them on these journeys. I've already done that. And I think I've done that for several pages. Also A-B testing, probably I've scored it for the marketer. Yes, super interesting for the marketer. That's not all, we can score pages. Oh, sometimes Braco does that. Yes, but we can also score the referrals. A referral is somebody who comes from a different website to our website. For example, if you go to umbraco.com, you have here the app store. There's the marketing suite. And if somebody's reading this, ah, oh, this is really interesting, cool stuff, and go to those website, I know this person is interested in us. So what I'm gonna do here, I can score this incoming URL. I've done it already. Here you see, if people come from this URL, this was the, just a URL in umbraco.com, they are probably, a, a marketer or a marketer at an Embraco agency or company owner. I don't think that a lot of data and privacy officers uh, come to Embraco.com to look for an app that does A-B testing and personalization. These are typically these kind of persons and probably people were in the C phase. They did never heard of it, the marketing suite and now they come to this. So we're gonna score them uh, against the customer journey and against persona. Maybe that sounds a bit complex. And actually it isn't if you've tested it for a while, but we made it even easier. Here we have the website again, but um, maybe some of you already noticed, but there's a thing here. I don't know how, we, how you would call it, but a thingy. And we call it the cockpit because if you open it, you get a cockpit with insights about your Embraco page but also analytics, uh, data about A-B testing and personalization. Um, because it's, uh, it's over here, but you can also put it to the, other, uh, to the other side. So it's not in your way. And if you click through the website, it's always there. You can close it and then it's gone. And of course you only see this if you're logged into Embraco. You can see analytics of the page. For example, how long have you been on the page? Uh, you can also see the scroll depth, how far did you come? And we all store all this dot data so we can personalize it at a later moment. As you might see the time on page is still ticking because I'm still on the page, but I'm not really engaged on the, on the page. Uh, right now I'm engaged on the page, I'm doing stuff. But as soon as I stop, it will count for five more seconds but also if I go to another uh, tab, for example, I'm still on, the, on that page, but I'm not really engaged. So we're storing engage time as well uh, because we're measuring how long do you really interact with this page. We are gonna store whether you click, for example, this goes to a YouTube channel. You see, hey, this person clicked on their YouTube channel. We're gonna store that so you can use it later to score it against the customer journey. Also, which browser I'm using, from which IP I come, you see it's anonymized because of GDPR uh, compliance. Uh, in this session, I've visited 10 pages and I've been there for four times. For now, I'm gonna delete my cookie. So I'm a new, uh, new user again. 
I'm going to reload the page. And then you see it's my first page, my first session. Because we're going to look at personalization. Here we have the customer journey. And the outline is a bit uh, weird, but we see the privacy officer, we see the company marketer, we see the faces. Um, and I'm now going to the A-B testing page, which, which was particularly interesting for the company marketer. You will see that I get those 10 points. If I go to the blog, I didn't score the blog because the blog is interesting for everybody, so I didn't score it. But if I'm going to the data control page, I see I'm scoring points for the data and privacy officer. And I'm scoring for these journey steps as well. So if I click through the website and I go to the, mar uh, to the uh, roadmap, maybe I get some points. Maybe if I go to the pricing page, I score that as well. And we're collecting points. And at a certain uh, time, we're going to reach a threshold. This threshold can be configured. How many points do you have to collect before we say, okay, you're probably this or that person. And here you see this journey phase, the thing phase, reach the threshold and it's more than the, than the rest. And that's why I, the algorithm now thinks, assumes that we're in the think phase. I go back to the AB testing, I'm gonna score for the marketer again. So the, uh, the algorithm now thinks I'm a marketer. We scored the content, we scored referrals and we're collecting data. Nobody sees this, but it's important to understand. And here you can test what the algorithm actually is doing. Here we saw the first journey group and here we have the second journey group as well. We're gonna focus for, this, uh, for now on this. And we're gonna reuse this knowledge that we have. Okay, this is a company marketer. I wanna personalize my website for this company marketer. Back to Umbraco. Back to apply personalization. And I'm gonna create new personalization. Show a different headline for marketers. Because right now, if you go to the to the website, you see the all-in-one marketing suite for Abraco. It's for everyone. It's cool for everyone. But we want to show something different for the marketers. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna score it, or we're gonna personalize the home page. And we're going to include some CSS again. Forgive me for the complex CSS, but I have a really talented front-end developer who said I'm going to replace the H1, so this H1, with a different text. Forgive me for now for the complex CSS. I'm going to preview this, and now I see oh, I'm going to close this. Start testing your Umbraco website within five minutes. That's something cool that the marketer wants to hear. Not the only one you have marketing suite that is for everyone. Now, this is specifically targeted to the marketer. And we need creative marketers again to come up with creative headlines or creative in images to make personalization work. This was the preview URL again. I'm going to save and close it. I'm going to Put it on the segment marketers. I'm going to show you within a second how we created that and we're going to start it. And because I'm a marketer and also if I go to the to the home page, I now see this text. That's personalization. I'm going to show you the segment marketers. What I did, I created a persona or I selected the personas that I wanted to uh, show this different message to someone who is a company owner or a marketer or an, uh, uh, at an Umbraco agency or a company market. That is cool. That is super cool. I've also created a segment called data and privacy officers. That's this persona. It's a data and privacy officer. And as the, at the moment we realize that somebody is a data and privacy officer, we're going to uh, personalize the website experience as well. I've already set it up here. Different headline for privacy officers. I'm gonna make it active. If I'm going now to the website, 
I will see this. I'm going to delete the cookie once more. Wait for it. Because now I'm a new visitor again for the algorithm. If I'm going to the blog, I'm going to look at the full data control versus third party cookies. Somebody's reading this. Oh, super interesting. GDPR compliance, no third party cookies, the age of ethical marketing has arrived. What a cool system is this? And this person goes back to the home page. It now says full control over your own data. And that's exactly what personalization does. It makes it a relevant message for this person without writing any line of code. And well, uh, in this case, I'm saying that JavaScript is not really code. This is of course not true, but for this moment, you didn't code uh, that much. So that is really cool. That is really cool. And that's what our personalization platform does for now. You can see in a moment, in one of the next sprints, we're gonna search, score search terms as well, or campaigns that are currently active, stuff like that, to make sure that we're going to score them on all these steps. What we also created in the cockpit is that you see, okay, which parameters are active. It's after one, it's after 12 as well. Um, I'm this persona and I see for this segment, I'm not on a mobile device, it's grayed out and it's not between uh, 10 in the afternoon and 12 in the, uh, in the uh, <laughs> at uh, 12 o'clock but I'm in the C or in a think phase. So I'm part, partially uh, applying to the parameters in the segment, but not to all, and not, a, not, on, uh, not to this at all. So that's personalization. Maybe look complex, but it's really simple if you just start playing with it, just start doing stuff. One more thing, and I'm seeing that I'm really uh, over time, because I promised you 30 minutes, but hopefully it's interesting. Um, this is Oracle 8.7, and this is the default starter kit. I've installed the marketing suite, uh, separate branch, and we're going to ship this at the end of September. Um, but what we're going to do, and I'm going to demo it with A-B testing now. This is the home page. Sorry, should show you that first homepage of the starter kit. It looks like this. Ta -da, fantastic. What we're now doing is we're going to start an AP test. Test it. I'm going to put it in the project. I'm going to quickly over this. We're going to test this specific page and we're going to create a variant of this page. We want to test whether a different variant works. I'm opening it up in split view. Here we have the original, and here we have the alternative version. And I've set up a couple of uh, properties that I can vary by segment. I can pick another background in the hope that that leads to better results. For example, what always works is if you put Matt Brailsford on the background of your website, you get a great conversion boost. But I can also shift the font. Somebody made this property within Umbraco and I can pick a, a different color team. For example, some. You see, uh, these are rem removed here, but that's fixed in 8.7 in the final release. Uh, but I have a different color team. I go back to the AB test. I want to preview that as well. And here you see the website is totally different from before. This was it, a different headline or a different font, etc. I'm going to test it now. And I didn't write any CSS or JavaScript. I need to select a goal. That's OK for now. And I'm going to start the test. And randomly, people get assigned a variant, A or B. In this, in this case, A. Hopefully, I'm going to get version B as well. One moment. Yes, there it is. People get randomly assigned another version. And what's cool is that also on different pages, it loads the same uh, font size, uh, uh, font 
and a color scheme. So that's working. For now, it's an A-B test based on a 50-50% chance. But in the, in the version that we're shipping at the end of September, you can use it for personalization as well. Just go to your website, create a split view, select a segment and personalize your website without writing any CSS or JavaScript. That is cool. Back to the PowerPoint. Yes, we did the seven steps. We gathered your data, we created segments based on the explicit data. We used the, uh, the browser version and uh, uh, the time of the day. We personalized the website with including CSS and JavaScript to remove the telephone number. I showed you how you can create customer journeys and personas. Uh, we had five personas and two customer, uh, uh, two journey groups uh, with some steps. And I scored the website against these customer journeys and personas. That, uh, the result was that people fell into segments and I, that I used these segments to create different headlines, but I can also create different images uh, different styling or different text or even different URLs, stuff like that. The only step that I skipped, skipped is uh, the analy uh, uh, analyzing the success of the personalization. I will do that up in a following seminar. But that's it, seven steps. I took you through it quite quickly, um, but it's really a thing that you should just start with. Just try it out. Just play with it. Think about who's visiting your website. What do they want to achieve? And how can I adapt the rest of the website toward the needs of your customers? In this version, later this month, if you go to the, uh, to the content app, you get a new uh, button, add personalized variant, and then you're opening up the split view. First, you pick the segment, and then you're opening up the split view. So that's it. The all-in-one marketing suite for Morocco is really there. We have digital analytics, we have A-B testing, we have personalization, and we have profiling. It just works out of the box. Really an install is just a few minutes work, or, or not even work, you have to wait for Morocco to spin up again, uh, but it's not work. You install it and it just works. You have full control over all your data, making it really GDPR proof. But even if you're not in Europe, it's really interesting to have full control over all your data. Don't write any code if you don't want to. And it's really vanilla and Braco. That's the same look and feel. We're using the power of segments. These were already in Braco, but we enabled it to use it. We're using content apps, custom sections, just vanilla and Braco, like you, you're used to. And we designed it with performance in mind. Uh, also on a high load, it should perform excellent and do all the stuff you want. And we've made it extensible. As we call it the Umbraco way. If you, uh, if you work with Umbraco before, you can extend it towards everything you dream of. And you can do that with the marketing suite as well. And we're also contributing to Umbraco. We're sometimes having discussions or uh, uh, with the core team to really enable, uh, to, to contribute to the code base as well. So we can do cool stuff for our own, but also contribute to the open source project. It's really important for us. You can check out uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, we've created a few tutorials already, but we're creating constantly new tutorials, especially now we're gonna create a lot of tutorials around personalization where I'm going to do it in a slower pace. And we're also having a documentation website. For now, our roadmap is delivering the split view at the 1st of October. And we're going to release partner licenses as well. Uh, something that I'm going to tell you about in a few seconds. Um, we're going to polish the U marketing suite a bit more in October. Uh, some CSS, some cool features. Uh, and make it even easier to work with. 
And in November, we're going to do advanced personalization, take it to the next level, adding more, more segment parameters, uh, making it even easier to navigate, to test it, uh, and stuff like that. Um, and in the sprint of December, we're going to look at developer extensibility because maybe you have data on your own in your CRM, for example, or you have a really cool algorithm that you want to implement. Well, we're going to open up the system so you can extend it in the way you want and make all kinds of crazy cool stuff. And as long as you're measuring that it's improving your conversions, then it's okay. And you can do whatever you want with it. And then we're also going to visualize profiles in the back office. It's not going to look like this, but you are, you are going to see who's where, what are they doing, what did they uh, look for, etc. The pricing is, in my opinion, really reasonably priced because it works in five minutes and you don't have to write any code. Uh, you have the dev license, you can try it out for now. You can use it for 60 days on your local domain. Uh, way cooler is the analytics license uh, where we're storing all the data. Uh, we start collecting it. Um, and it's a really good alternative, for example, uh, when you're privacy aware. But if you want to unleash the full power of the new marketing suite, these licenses are perfect for you. Uh, they are grouped on the number of domains uh, and the number of page views per month. The bigger the website, then you pay a bit more for uh, the same functionality. It's really cool. And now we have a, the introduction of a demo license because we've got a lot of feedback. Well, this local host, this free domain, uh, this dev domain uh, license, this dev license, it's okay, but it's only working for our local hosts and we cannot uh, show that to our clients. Uh, so we created a demo license. You can add three domains for it uh, and you get 1,000 page views per month and you only pay 250 euros one time and you can use it for as long as you want to demonstrate, to try it out, to create cool stuff with it. We're introducing that at the end of uh, September, but if you're interested, please send us an email. Or if you're not on a Firefox browser after 12 o'clock, you can also call us with the number you just saw. And we're also opening up a partner program. And the partner program gives you direct access to the new marketing suite. You get influence on the roadmap because we need input to create a better product for your clients. Um, we're going to uh, have a target response time for bug reports, etc. Uh, you're going to list be listed as a U Marketing Suite implementation partner. We're going to promise that we don't increase the prices of running licenses with more than 5% a year. Um, you get unlimited dev and demo licenses. The demo license was the one that I just showed you, which is 250 euros one time, but you're going to get it for free. But because you're, as a partner, uh, you are supporting this product, and you're making sure that we can sustain or uh, make a sustainable product of it. And you get discounts on the list prices if you have multiple licenses running. Um, it's a yearly fee of a thousand euros. Uh, so in my opinion, that's a bargain. So go to www.umarketingsuite.com and register yourself. Create a free development license to try on your machine. Uh, test it, play it, try it out. Uh, watch the videos. And if you're interested, you can read the documentation. But most of the time, nobody reads documentation for whatever kind of reason. Um, buy a first license and put it on your favorite V8 website because you just need to get started to get a hold of this and see how super cool this product is. My name is Jeffrey Sch uh, Schoemaker. Um, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on this website as well. And I'm going to stop sharing and going to look in YouTube. YouTube is always a few uh, seconds behind. I'm going to look if there are any questions.
And I have a question of Matthew. How is the personalization JavaScript slash CSS added to the DOM? Is browser caching a concern? Um, the the uh, JavaScript and the CSS is added at the end of the, uh, the page. Maybe I, no, I don't have to show that. You can test it out yourself. It's uh, rendered at the end, just before the closing body tag. Uh, and we're using, a, yes, now you see that I'm not a real developer anymore. Uh, I will ask my team how it's called. I know it, oh, I don't care at this moment. Uh, but browser caching isn't a concern in, the, in that way because we're uh, putting it in line into it. And to confirm, we will be able, this is a question again from Matthew, thank you. Uh, we will be able to create custom personalization segment, segment criteria after the advanced personalization sprint. Yes, either at the advanced personalization sprint or in the developer extensibility sprint. Uh, don't know when we're going to put this item from the backlog into the sprint, but in one of these two sprints, you can add your own criteria as well. Um, but our recommendation is always start simple with just a few, with one parameter, for example, or two parameters before you, uh, you are going to make it really complex and adding your own data, add in the customer journey and create all kinds of complex statements. That's it. I want to thank you for now. If you have any questions left, please email us and I will see you next time. Bye bye.